Well, it's not where we where we've chosen. That's where God placed us. Um, it's yeah. a great answer. <laughs> <laughs> we're here to serve God, serve, serve our pastors, and that's what we're supposed to do, regardless yeah. of who's here, who's telling you what or when or how to do yeah. it. You just obey and do it and keep going. We, we got to remember what our purpose here is, and our purpose here is to serve God. And just as long as we keep our eyes on God, everything else anybody says or does shouldn't affect us. Um, that's that's number one. And then you know number two is you know we have to keep in mind that we're a family, and we don't always get along with our brothers and sisters, but at the end, we love them and, and forgive them, you know, in, in any way. So that's 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 what we always try to keep in mind. Hi, Heritage family, and welcome to another episode of Winning Conversations. Today we have Joe and Monica Cappuccino. How are y'all doing? We're good. Doing good. good. And my co-host, Hi. Tanya. Hi, girl. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> okay, every episode you have to start with that. <laughs> well, we're so excited to have you guys on the podcast. Y'all have been at Heritage for a long time. Yes. And this is your first time here on our podcast, so I'm excited to talk. Yeah, I get am to too. know them a little more. This is one of the very first families that I ever met at Heritage. I love Joe that. and Monica. Yes. Yes. Yes, it is. So, how long have y'all been here exactly? The end of two thousand seven, to and then we became members in two thousand eight, February two thousand eight. Wow, mm -hmm. a long time. Yep. Yes. They haven't given us keys to the church. <laughs> <laughs> it's like second home. Yes, yes it, it is. is. How did you find Heritage, Joe? It was me, but it was your cousins, Melinda. Started, oh, Melinda. Yeah, oh. Her, her cousins kept on telling us, there's a church, there's a church at Jerry Seville They invited has. us to Kenneth Copeland's church. Okay. And we went there, and then they told us, well, you're close by Jerry Seville. And so that's when Joe remembered. Mm -hmm. When he was younger, he used to attend. Yes. I, I attended Jerry Seville's church back when it was on Bolt Street. Mm -hmm. And so we decided to try it, try it out over here. And uh, it was... But Joe came first. I came first, came first, and she didn't want to come. <laughs> and then, uh, and then she she tried it out, and I let you. Yeah. So he came about six months, and I didn't go to church at all because mm -hmm. it was different for me. I came from a different background, and then um, I thought, okay, I'll go. And so I came and brought the kids, and um, and they sent my son off to another church place well <laughs> you gotta give some context for that. <laughs> they, they shipped him they off. Shipped off so at the no. time we had another building just a mile or so away exactly. right exactly. that they were doing yeah. the kids ministry at mm -hmm. so you know you can tell yeah, the yeah, story yeah. so then <laughs> um, <laughs> just shipping yes. kids around the a little context <laughs> guess what that was the preteens i guess so anyway, yes. we came sick i came with with joe and uh it was different for me mm -hmm. and listening to the word and the clapping and the singing and it was just all different but um, we had been looking for a church home. Joe said, I'm staying here. So, and he said, but you can go wherever you want to go as long as the kids get involved. But, so by the time we left here and went home, I talked to my son and I'm like, do you want to try another church? And he said, no, mom, we found our church home. This is our mm -hmm. church home. And I said, Aww. okay, this is it. So I came back, we uh, became members, we volunteered. And I volunteered because I wanted to know more what was going yeah. on for mm -hmm. me. Yeah, for my child. But being in the preteen, I was learning myself because I didn't know. So, kind of taking baby steps that helped me learn through the teenage, you know, through the yeah. Well, it was they were pre what are they called preteens. Pre yeah, preteens. Back then, it was like Air Force. Yes, all that. We've had a lot of iterations. Yes, yeah. in, yes. In that, in that area. So that helped me, and then I just continued to volunteer and just kind of love all the praise and worship and just seeing all the children praising God, and I'm like, this, there's something here, and then just starting to listen to more and more, and back then, um, Pastor Seville spoke more than Pastor mm -hmm. Justin, so it's just, it was really strong, and so just opened my eyes, so here I am. And you come Here's from a sense. Catholic background, correct? I do, and so it was really different. It's an yeah. <laughs> incredible difference. Yes, we yeah. got married through the Catholic faith, and I told Joe we didn't have to, because he, he was in, in Catholic church, mm -hmm. but he wanted to have a, a marriage blessed, and so we went ahead and went through all the classes and did all that. Mm -hmm. But after a while, he didn't, he wasn't getting enough. And so going through trials in our marriage mm -hmm. and, you know, job loss and financial, just things of life, mm -hmm. we needed something else. And so we found it here. 
here we are. That's awesome. Yeah. And your boys have grown, grown up in the, yes, in the church. Yes, church. In the church, and they and they loved it and everything. And my oldest still comes. My younger one, well, we're still working on him. I've been on two mission trips with your oldest. Trey. Uh-huh. Trey. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so he still comes, and he's still involved. But, um, yeah, here we are. It's been really neat to watch your boys grow up. Yeah, you know, and Jonathan still comes back and forth. You know, he wavers. Yeah, but, you know, we're still praying on him. And he knows the <laughs> word, and he he's he's got that. I love seeing like families who have been here for so long, and now their kids are all you know grown up, and they having because that's you know my children too. They're mm-hmm. growing up in this church, mm-hmm. and I'm just like excited to see in the next ten years like all of our little ones right. be that. You know what I mean? Right. Just oh, yeah. Generations and generations. Yes. Yeah, I love that. Mm-hmm. And for as long as I've known y'all, uh, preteen, student ministry, from babies all the way up is where you have chosen right. to serve, right? Exactly. Yes. Well, it's not where we're, where we're chosen. That's where God placed us. Um, it's yeah. a great answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we yes. prayed about it and see where we, where we needed to be. And that's where we, can, we need mm-hmm. to be with the yep. children. That's yeah, he, he pulled us in from day one. Uh, with the, um, We went to... Um, a Christmas party. That's what it was, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, we went to. It a was Christmas a Christmas party, party. and uh, Armando was was the pastor over over the group, and he asked me to flip uh, flip ha- hot dogs, and I started flipping hot dogs and you know, serving from day one. Day one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, one of the areas I started serving in first was with preteens. And so you were one of like the very mm-hmm. first couples I served with and watching you all parent your boys and really willing to do anything. Like right. I, you were like, what else? What do you need? What do you need? What do you need? Right. It was always what I heard Monica saying. That's right. And so uh, I think you guys have probably seen just about every transition of leadership that's been in Which the Which naturally ministries. there's been... I mean, there's been plenty, there's been plenty. Yeah. especially oh, yeah. in 17 yes. years. Yes, there has been. Yeah. Over a lot, there has been. There has uh-huh. been. Different changes, different ways of doing things. I mean, how does how does someone, like, how do y'all navigate that as members of a church seeing changes like that? Does that, like, falter your walk or anything like that? Or how have y'all handled the changes? Well, it did. You know, we kind of, you get offended here or there because they want you to do it this way and you were doing this way or mm-hmm. but we're here to serve God serve mm-hmm. the Lord, serve our pastors and that's what we're supposed to do regardless mm-hmm. of who's here or who's telling you what or when or how to do yeah. it you just obey and do it and mm-hmm. keep going yeah. we, we got to remember what our purpose here is you know our purpose here is to serve God and just as long as we keep our eyes on God everything else anybody says or does shouldn't affect us right. um, that's that's number one and then, you know, number two is, you know, we have to keep in mind that we're a family. Right. And we don't always get along with our brothers and sisters, right. but at the end, we love them and, and forgive them, you know, in, in any way. So that's 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 what we always that's try good. to keep in yeah. mind. How did you guys, like, stay above the fray when it came to situations like that? Because I've been here just shortly <laughs> after you were here, so I remember some of these stories, and we're right. not going to rehash those stories, but knowing that there's opportunity for those things or opportunities to learn to walk in love learn to submit to leadership. Um, what was that like for y'all as you walked it out? Mm, I don't know. It was a little tough at times, but among us, we would talk about it, but then we just have to pray about it and just mm-hmm. continue, you know, to stay in that prayer, put God first and he's going to guide us and everything we need and yeah. do and say. And yes. mm-hmm. I mean, that's really. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, we would pray about it and then we would sit back and, and wait for God to give us signs and, and he would give us signs. Mm-hmm. I mean, there was, there was times that, you know, um some things would happen with other brothers and and all and and uh, i would sit back and pray about it and even i mean there were times i was disgusted and said you know that's it let's go to another church but you know we'd sit back and pray about it and then somehow either pastor pastor justin would call me up and start talking to me about it and it was something i knew that was from god because we didn't discuss it with anybody else yeah. you know we mm-hmm. discuss it among each other and so i know and I thank God that, that Pastor Justin is listens to God and, and, and certain people around him listen to God because without that we probably wouldn't be here. Yeah. You know, and, and and he he you know, they, they listen to God, they listen to what he says and they're you know, they just pay attention to him and, and follow what he says and that kinda gives us guidance on what we need to do. So we, we I think we would like you know, we see the pastors and everyone else following God and we want to be exactly like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's that's what we try to do. Yeah. 
That's a really, um, like a really real and like vulnerable place to be in. People are going yeah. to be offended. Mm -hmm. And it, I mean, it's not, it's, it's not just this church everywhere, yes. right? yeah. anywhere yes. you it's are, that's right. There's mm -hmm. opportunities for offense and it's about how you respond to it and hearing what God is saying about it mm -hmm. because yeah. it's easy to run. It's easy to just move on, but I feel like it takes more courage to stay and walk things Absolutely. out than it does to just dip out. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yes. And so that's, I mean, that speaks to a lot of people, I feel. I, I think it does. And, and having known y'all for the amount of time, you've shown that faithfulness to God mm -hmm. in the midst of changes and changes are going to mm -hmm. happen. Right. Um, one of the fa my favorite sayings is from Keith Moore and he says, people will fail you, but the Holy Ghost never will. So yeah. follow the leadership oh, yes. of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Right. And that's what y'all have demonstrated, whether you've been here or um, in the workplace or wherever, like you guys are still consistent. And you don't have here. to always agree with somebody to yeah. honor them 100%. or to honor God and mm -hmm. the house that you've been put in, which is, Yes. This one. <laughs> yes. And your willingness to serve is, is so, it was one of the very first thing I noticed about you. And I noticed about you when we, we had a first like leadership meeting, I had stepped in to help lead an area and you guys were here and I decided that tacos was what we were going to have, but I am, it's mistake, not, mistake. not a mistake. <laughs> you let the white girl plan the taco night and it comes Big out like mistake. white girl taco night. But you came along, you're like, let me just help. Let I me just, just help. Over. I'm just going to yeah, make I this just reasonable. Over. That's what I like to do. I wanted to be help help you when you spoke and when Joe would teach. I just wanted to make sure you had everything you needed prepared. That's yeah. kind of what I did. And, so and the rice I enjoyed and beans. That. And the rice and beans. <laughs> yeah. And I set up the tacos the way it was. So the, the right way Good. to do it. The really the right authentic way to do it. right way. Yes. yes. So, yes. Okay. Um, the other thing I wanted to uh, just kind of bring out is that it's not like a one-way street. Like, you're just not always serving, serving, serving staying on the staying in plugged in but you guys also have a neat story about how god surrounds your family also because families go through ups and downs right. will you share some of the ways that churches come alongside that you've shared with me and really supported you guys as you've raised your boys and walked out life um uh, what tell me about the trek oh uh, so one day um so trey was uh was going to Nationals. Regionals. Oh, regionals. Mm -hmm. He's a runner, correct? He's a runner, so cross-country runner. And Pastor Rick knew about it, and he was excited for him that he was going to be out in... Where are we going to go to? Um, St. Louis, Missouri, I right. think. And so he called Joe and was congratulating him, and Joe, he said, are y'all going to go out there? And Joe's like, no, we just can't. We didn't want to say we can't because we don't have any money. We just, well, no, financially at this time we can't do it. Well, why not? It's a big thing. We just can't. So anyway, about an hour later... He told Joe, come by, the off, uh, come by the office, we have something for you. So he came by and he said, I just told some people around the office, yeah, Joe and Monica, you know, the finance, you can't go see their son uh, run. And they're, the next thing when you, we had yeah. quite a bit of money <laughs> that they gave us to go, that's to go within an hour. Yeah. He's like, I just asked the people in the office and this is how much we came up for and we want y'all to go out there. Yeah, yeah, so. and then that, that was a blessing to me because, I mean, that was just, we didn't know what, what opportunity we were, we were missing out on. Right, you know, until we, we, we got there. And, and Rick knew. And so just for them to get everything together and send us out there, it was, it was just, it was a blessing. Yeah. It was a really a blessing. Uh, another time was when, uh, just recently my, my mother just right. passed and, um, it just really amazes me to see the family step up and, you know, y'all got everything together. Y'all got, you know, we had the reception up here and y'all had everything just arranged and it was so beautiful. It was so beautiful. And I mean, I, I didn't have to get up. I didn't have to do anything. I mean, y'all were there just helping out and, and, you know, our family and our friends were just so amazed about how the church just came together and they just, everything just flowed like perfect. No one had I to mean, do anything. Everybody was just there for each other. But you guys had everything taken care of. My my family, you know, mm -hmm. Hispanic family, we're used to helping and setting up mm -hmm. and right. you're going to yes. do yeah. and he's, th When I got here, they said, I go, do y'all have everything ready? And then like, we don't have to do nothing. Yeah. The church family took care of it all. It's awesome. Yep. And then my neighbor was just like, oh my God, your church family is just awesome. I'm like, yes, yes, they are. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just so emotional. But And they just could not stop talking about that for the whole week. My family, my neighbors, everybody that came, mm -hmm. our friends, and they're just like, oh yep. my gosh, they just so organized. So yes, we're blessed to be here and blessed for them to 
we serve for them and they help us. I mean, it's two well, way family like too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what that's what family does for that's each right. other. That's right. Um, what would you say to somebody who's in search of a church home? What God, would you say <laughs> to somebody who is unsure about plugging in? Because I mean, this conversation just highlights there's like there's two sides to every coin, right? Yes. So we're still fallen people in a fallen world, and exactly. we all love mm-hmm. a savior who can help us with those things. Yeah. But some people struggle to plug into any local church and to understand that it's it's this community relationship that really benefits their life. So what would you say to those people? Um, I, I would say you have to come in with an open heart. You have to come in looking to see and, and, and praying that, that uh, and um, well, the first one to come in probably don't pray, but <laughs> co- come in at least with, with, with an open an open mind of what you want to receive. And then you have to um, make sure that, that uh, uh, I mean, I, I can't think of anything else. I'd just come in with an open mind. And uh, I believe God takes takes care of, of that. I mean, he, like like with us, you, you come and, and he puts it in your heart that that's the right place. Mm-hmm, you know, yeah. he, he puts a little fire in you that you want to see, okay, this is the first time. How's it going to be the second time? Mm-hmm. And and the more you come, the more you 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 get hungry. You 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 want to feed off of that mm-hmm. off of that thirst, and you just keep coming. Um, yeah. And another thing is you have to get plugged in and serve. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, it, to me, it's so important that you have to serve in order for your needs to be met and see what else is out there for you to to grow in. Mm-hmm. I mean, because you know when we're going through our trials and, and, and tribulations. Um, and, and we had just stepped back and, and just kind of were sitting in a pews for a while. And, um, you know, Pastor Justin, he, he kept on saying, you know, you need to be out, you know, helping rather than sitting in here. And sometimes I felt like he's talking to me and, you know, I'd kind of nudge her like, you know, I to you. started serving again. He, and, we took uh, time off. We yes. took a year yes. off. I think we took a year off. We and took then, long, longer than a year. And then, well, I took a year and so, <laughs> and I said, I have to go back and do something. This is just not yeah, right. right. And then I kept trying to nudge him. That's how he got into the nursery. Before yes. it was the other way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, right. Yes. Yeah. But but then I, I realized that when you go through trials and tribulation, you have to get your feet planted, mm-hmm. you know, because things are going to come and knock you down. So you have to get planted. And Good. so that's, and one way is to serve. And that's, that's what I told her. I, I told her, I said, I have to serve more. We have to serve more because we're going through things and we have to get planted. And and that's what we've done. I mean, I to bring somebody into the church. That was a question. (laughs) No, I think a good word to some getting someone in the church or people who come into the, it's willing. You have to be Mm, willing to sit. You have to be willing to receive. You have to be willing to get corrected yeah. you have to be willing to serve you know willing i feel like is just the perfect word to sum that mm-hmm. up yeah yes. i tell the i like when i the patients that come in what church because they i guess they see it in me and i'm mm-hmm. just like because i listen to you know christian music <laughs> in my room and you know i'm you know, you're I'm, a dental I'm a dental, dental assistant, assistant. So I'm go. talking to somebody or they have problems or they're mm-hmm. going through something. I'm like, Can I pray for you? Or do you need or sometimes they even ask for prayer or we just love it here. And I'll invite them and I'll say, This is how our church is. Our church we love on everyone, mm-hmm. no matter what you're going through, no matter what religion you've come from. Yeah. We're here, we're open, we're here for you to to hear you. Yeah. You know, what you need. It's not just long term yes. or long standing members who right get that kind of treatment it's everybody, everybody. that's what i tell me mm-hmm. you, you come in it doesn't matter who you are how you look or whatever you come in and you see us we will greet you and have and serve yeah. you and mm-hmm. sit with you and, and guide you to what you need that's what i tell them yeah, oh, yeah where are you at and i just so i started carrying those cards and <laughs> yeah. handing them out mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's good and you know we talk about our kids and our you know what we have here to offer and so that's kind of what I, I think say. it's a it's a it's a beautiful story of what the body crisis really like. Yeah. So uh, we appreciate y'all sharing it. Yes. One of the things that you guys know fairly well is the theme, the vision of the house is to make winners in life. Right. right. And uh, what when you think about that statement and how it kind of drives what we do, whether we're in student ministries or we're greeting at the door or we're staying late and lock up on Wednesday night, whatever mm-hmm. we're doing, we're making winners in life. What, do, what does that mean to you? I always just say, I just always want to put 
winners in life, you put God first and everything will come. That's, that's kind of how I just sum it up to I just put him first, you know. For me, it was, I had a hard time doing that, you know, learning, going through everything, baby steps, and just learn that putting God first, you're going to win all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, with me, it's it's more, um, uh, I think what Pastor, Pastor Jerry said, he said, yeah. a lot of times, we got to be the vision of what they're going to see. You know, we have to be Jesus. We mm-hmm. have to be, they're the first person, you know, mm-hmm. we, the first impression yes. that they're going to get. So we have to be that. And so that that's what we try to be. We try to be that first impression yes. they're going to get. So that's, to me, that's that's what that is. That's but amazing. Those are great answers. Yeah. Solid. Well, you guys are precious gifts to our house. So we are so thankful for you and your boys mm-hmm. and yeah. the men that they've grown into. I can't even say boys. I know. When they first came, they were little boys. These are adults. Yeah. Yeah. Now they're adult yeah. grown men. Jonathan, I think, was five. That's he crazy. Was little. I found some old yes. pictures recently, and it was some of those first Christmas parties, those first times, and they were they just their feet don't even hit the mm. ground. They're just <laughs> hanging off the chair, and it makes my heart smile I thinking know. about how long we've been in relationship with y'all. So. Thank you all for being here. We're really yeah. blessed by you. Thank, thank you, you for sharing. having us. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> uh, we want to just encourage you all to uh, join us on Instagram. We have a Winning Conversations Instagram page. We also are on YouTube. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you uh, like hit the like button. It helps the algorithm send it to more people so more people hear about amazing people like Joe and Monica Cappuccino. Um, and tune in next week for another Winning Conversations. Bye.